Hello Bakers, today we are going to be exploring the next generation of modeling brought to us by Autodesk inside 3ds Max 2021. The development team have added some awesome features that I've been playing around in the last couple of weeks and I can say that with each new update I'm being more and more surprised how quickly some of these features are being implemented and also how well they are working. I'm going to show you all the new modifications that you can do while you are modeling inside Editable Poly and as well I want to talk a little bit about texturing. There are also some other interesting features but I will make a dedicated videos for those and now let's start. First one that I'm gonna show you is going to be about the texturing. So I'm going to create one plane and now I'm going to open the material editor and here before adding anything I'm going to search for random and you can see that now in the map browser there is a bitmap random tiling so I'm going to drag and drop this one into the scene. Once you did that it will open you the browser menu so here you will be able to just select the texture that you want. In my case I have a texture of a grass that doesn't tile very well. Now that the texture is imported we have the same pins that we can just come and for example take a PBR material and let's say we want to connect the base color because this is what we have here and I'm going to assign it to our plane. I'll just put the roughness to one. And at the moment, this is just one time being tiled. I'm going to go and put UVW map modifier and I'm going to make it so that it tiles a couple of times. So I'm going to do it, let's say three times on each axis. Let me scale a little bit the plane so it's better visible and you can see that right from the start it looks pretty well. I'm going to make duplicate here for comparison and I'm going to add the same texture but without the new map modifier. So if I assign this one you can see how it looks. There is a little bit this lines it's not like super bad but there are these darker and brighter lines on our texture so the tiling is very noticeable but if i assign the one which we have with the new map inside 3ds max you can see that now this issue is fixed if i select the new map we have a lot of things that we can change so first we can change the minimum and maximum scale so for example if we want the texture not to be this small we can come here and say we want it three by three and now you can see that it became a lot bigger but as well for example if we want we can make it that we have like a minimum value of one and then we have maximum value of three and you will see that it will automatically like scatter different sizes around and this algorithm works super well. I tested it already with a couple of different types of textures and materials and it stitches everything very, very nicely and you can create a lot of very quick random effects. Another thing that is very cool and I used it for was for scattering some dirt. So one idea that uh, I can give you is you can use this to scatter some dirt randomly like if you have just like some texture to use as an alpha and then on top of that you can use for example an ambient occlusion map for additional masking and this way it will have only in some crevices and crevices this dirt so the combinations are limitless like this thing saves us so much time and also it gives you so much opportunity just being inside 3ds max not to go back and forth of changing how your textures are built tiled, how they are being scattered and as well the other very awesome thing is that if you are not happy with what you see now as a result you can always go and click on the random seed and it will automatically generate you different versions of this texture. The other very awesome thing is going to be of course that this we can always generate some amazing results from here and after that bake them to a new texture using the new menu rendering to texture. I'm going to make a separate video about it as it's a quite big topic and the improvements are quite big. So make sure to subscribe and follow me so that you don't miss when I upload that video. Now let's go into the king of those updates and this is our modeling part. First what I'm going to create is just a simple box and I have assigned a gray material so that it's better visible and I'm going to just convert it to editable poly. We are going on polygon and now comes the very very interesting part 
and something that I was hoping that we can have it inside 3ds Max for a very long time. Not only did the team from Autodesk implemented it, but they also implemented it very well. So now when we have some of our polygons selected and before, if you remember, if you hold shift and drag, it was going to create a clone of this polygon, but this is changed now. So if I hold shift and drag, it's going to extrude and I can extrude a couple of times. Then I'm going to extrude to the top. And then I suddenly decide that this part here, I didn't want it like that, but instead I wanted to have a little bit of a dent in here. So before what we had to do was to create some edges and then to start extruding towards here and so on and so on, which I would say wasn't the fastest way to model some things. But now instead we can just hold it and extrude inwards. You will say, oh my God, what's happening here? The geometry is not correct. No, you can see that 3ds Max automatically welds and creates the new geometry and how it should look like. This includes like, for example, if I want to do it here, you can see that it created everything very nicely. This makes modeling of different elements insanely fast and insanely quick. Of course, for game developers, this is something that you can see that it creates n-gons and we don't like n-gons. So what you can do is just select two vertices once we have already created some geometry and then we can use the connect function. I actually mapped the connect to our hotkey button. So this operation goes very fast, but if you didn't do so, it's also pretty quick just from the menu here for the modeling. I find this way of modeling and creating assets very fast and very useful, especially if you're a prop artist and you're creating like weapons or anything like this. You can just put the image behind and after that make your mesh invisible with out and X. This way you can just quickly, quickly model something or just create the base mesh for something that you want to create. And it saves you a lot of time going between edges and also going between polygons and changing and creating like new edges, new loops, and after that extruding them. And also all of you probably remember how you needed to go and clean those places where you extruded inwards some polygon. Another thing that guys from Autodesk changed is the way that selections work. I'm quickly going to create a sphere to show you a little bit better. We are converting it to editable poly and now I'm going to select one of the polygons. Now if I hold shift and click somewhere, you will see that I'm able to move after that my mouse wherever direction I want and it will automatically select all the other polygons which are on the way. This makes it very quick for selecting some weird shapes like for example if you're making some ornaments or you just want to make more special selection around your mesh so it works like a, from a point to point and it's very quick very awesome and after that combined with the new functionalities for extruding makes modeling much faster and much more enjoyable thank you for joining me in today's video leave a like and a comment down below subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming videos see you next time